Meet Bernard Arnault, the richest man in Europe with the net worth of more than $222 billion. He leads the luxury goods conglomerate LVMH, home to iconic brands like Louis Vuitton, Dior, and Sephora. Arnault's journey from a struggling construction company to a fashion empire is a remarkable tale of ambition, calculated risks, and a knack for spotting talented designers. Here in this video, we will tell you about his success story and how he became so rich. Make sure to watch the video till the end and subscribe to our channel. Also press the bell icon to get regular updates. Let's get started. Humble Beginnings Arnault's rise to the top of the fashion world started in a very different place than the glamorous world of haute couture. Arnault was born in Robex, a city in northern France that is known for its factories, in 1949. His family owned a small building company called Ferret Savinel. His father wanted him to join the family business after he finished school. But Arnold wasn't very interested in this road as a teenager. Even though he was a great player and wanted to make a living as a musician, he put his artistic goals on hold out of a sense of duty to his family. France's École Polytechnique University gave Arnold his degree in 1971, and he then went into business and banking. Working for his family's business for three years gave him a lot of useful knowledge. This was during the tough mid-1970s, when the construction industry was going downhill. The company was about to go bankrupt when Arnold's father retired in 1976. At age 27, he became the youngest CEO in France and took over as CEO. For the new executive, this was the start of a huge challenge that would set the stage for the amazing journey that would eventually take him to the top of the fashion business. Turning Failure into Opportunity Under Arnault's leadership, Ferret Savinel faced a significant decline, reaching the brink of liquidation by 1979 with accumulated debts of $50 million. Recognizing the futility of the construction business, Arnault, known for his bold risk-taking, decided to transform the remnants of his family's enterprise into something new. In 1984, he orchestrated an investor group and utilized Ferret Savinel's assets to acquire Boussac saint Frères, a luxury textile manufacturer. Boussac, once a prominent company, owned struggling brands, including the esteemed fashion house Christian Dior. Arnold's move was a carefully calculated risk that could either propel him to new heights or lead to his downfall. Reflecting on the acquisition of Christian Dior, Arnault expressed, When I bought Christian Dior, I knew what I was doing, but it still felt like I was jumping off the Eiffel Tower with a piece of string to save me. Revitalizing Iconic Brands Arnault saw the hidden promise in Christian Dior, the company's flagship brand, even though Bausek had a huge $100 million debt. In order to save the business, he quickly sold everything it owned, including storage, inventory, and tools. Arnault set out to bring new life to Dior with the help of the skilled fashion designer Gianfranco Ferre. He put a lot of money into opening new stores, adding more products, and putting in place ways for the whole company to save money. Dior was able to start making money again within just two years after making this smart move. A lot of people liked the new designs, which made Arnault look like a rising star in the French business world in the late 1980s. After Dior's success, Arnault, who had money and faith in himself, went looking for other well-known but poorly run luxury brands. From 1984 to 1988, he quickly bought companies like Colleen, the cobbler Berluti, and the jewelry maker Ripassi. Birth of the LVMH Empire Arnault's company, Financiera Gage, didn't stop at acquiring just one premium brand. It continued to add more to its collection. By 1988, the company had an impressive lineup of luxury subsidiaries, with Louis Vuitton, known for its leather goods, among them. Arnault, however, had bigger plans to dominate the industry. In that same year, he orchestrated a massive $1.5 billion merger between Financiera Gage and Mote Hennessy, a wine merchant. This merger gave birth to a new conglomerate named LVMH Mote Hennessy Louis Vuitton. Taking on the roles of chairman and CEO of LVMH, Arnault skillfully integrated his brands into a cohesive and synergistic operation. The profits from Louis Vuitton supported the growth of smaller houses like Colleen. Simultaneously, Arnault standardized supply chains, distribution, 
and marketing strategies across all brands. LVM8 became a hub for fashion talent, with renowned designers such as Marc Jacobs and Alexander McQueen creating groundbreaking collections for Arnault's subsidiaries. Supermodel icons like Naomi Campbell also added to the group's allure by featuring in LVM8 brand campaigns. Throughout the 1990s, Arnault aggressively expanded his empire by acquiring competitors, turning LVMH into a cultural force. Strategic investments included French luxury retailer Le Bon Marque and esteemed Italian fashion houses Fendi and Donna Caran. Arnault's business acumen and ambitious vision played a pivotal role in the rise and influence of LVMH during this period. Surviving Setbacks In 1999, Arnold faced a big problem when LVMH revealed its first annual loss in more than 10 years. The company said that slower industry growth and rising costs of doing business were to blame. Arnold's leadership style was criticized for being authoritarian and secretive, even though he admitted that the group was hard to manage. His critics pointed out that he often hired bright designers, but then fired them from important jobs later on. Critics said Arnold needed to make changes so he started a big shakeup that caused several leaders to quit, saying that the company culture he was in charge of was not welcoming. Even with these problems, Arnolf showed that he was strong and flexible. After some failures, he led LVMH through a process of restructuring that made the company leaner and more vertically integrated. As a smart business move, Arnold spread out power so that each LVMH house could be creative on its own. The way he led change with this change, showing that he could handle storms, learn from mistakes, and lead the company to a future where people work together more and come up with new ideas. Investing in digital and experiential luxury In the 2000s, as online shopping gained immense popularity, many feared negative consequences for luxury retail relying on in-person services. However, Bernard Arnault, the visionary behind LVMH, understood changing consumer habits exceptionally well. Despite concerns about compromising exclusivity, Arnault made early investments in LVMA's digital infrastructure, recognizing that the new generation of luxury consumers valued experiences over mere products. Arnault's trust in his brands led to the development of a robust social media presence and e-commerce options, giving LVMH a competitive edge years ahead of its rivals. Not many business leaders are as good as him at bringing old brands back to life by developing talent and shaking up markets at the same time. Even after all these years, the story of his unlikely rise still motivates people to think big. That's all for now. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to like and share the video and follow us for more amazing content. Thanks for watching.